the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The first reading is from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears, and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate. Until the Lord sends everyone far away, and the vast emptiness, and and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land, even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, and which you in turn received, in which you all also you stand, through which you are also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I have proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, 
that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Sophias, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I am persecuted through the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so, so we proclaim and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the, the fifth chapter. You, Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and saying, Go away from me, Lord for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also, so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I'd like to invite any young children who are here, if they'd like to join me up front. Are you willing to come up? Awesome. Come on up. You have another one back there, huh? That's okay. It's just you and me today. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So do you ever have to do chores at home? No? You don't have to make your bed? Or help wash dishes? Or clean up your toys? Put away your toys? Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Do you do it every time? Or sometimes do you forget? Sometimes I forget. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we all forget. Sometimes we all forget. In the first lesson, God talked to a little boy, just like you, and God said, who should I send? Who will go for us? And you know what that little boy said? What? He said, here I am, send me. He volunteered to go. He volunteered to do the job that God wanted him to do. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what? We are all called by God to tell people that Jesus loves them. Have you ever, told, have you ever sung the song, Jesus Loves Me? 
No? At some time you're going to get the chance to sing, Jesus loves me. But he does. He loves you, and he loves me, and he loves everybody out there. And so one of the things that God wants each one of us to do, because he's called every single one of us, every person out there, he's called each one of us to tell each other that Jesus loves us. Because sometimes we all need reminders. Sometimes we just all need reminders. Just like we need reminders to pick up our toys, right? I need, I need reminders all the time to, to pick up my toys. Shall we pray? Okay, pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for every person here. And don't forget that Jesus loves you. Don't forget that Jesus loves you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That was awesome. <laughs> Let us pray. God of sea and sky, thank you for giving us this beautiful earth we call home. Thank you for friends and family who support us. Thank you for this wonderful day. Open our ears to hear your word for us today. Open our eyes to see Jesus today. Open our hearts to hear your call to action this day. Amen. So for those who don't know me, and I know most don't, I have lived over half of my life here in Springfield. The first part of my life I lived in Northeast Iowa, Decorah to be specific, and then I went to school at the University of Iowa in Iowa City. I was hired by Missouri State University to be a faculty member of organic chemistry in 1986 and have been here ever since. And, and yesterday, it only came to me then, but I actually preached here at Messiah. It would spend about 27 years ago, so it was the old sanctuary. On Mother's Day, you, you used to have a woman come to preach, and you invited me to come, and it was right before my son was born, and I was really pregnant. And I remember everyone was worried that I was going to have that baby that day, um, during the service. Didn't happen that way, and, um, but that was about 27 years ago, so um, I have been here before. Um, my husband and I arrived in Springfield. We bought a home two blocks away from Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. We joined there, and we've never left. We have two children who were born here, and they're both grown. Sarah is our Firstborn, she is now married and lives with her husband in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, her husband is working on a PhD in a science-related field, and Sarah is working for the university, but also she has started seminary and is working towards becoming a pastor um, through the Rocky Mountain Synod. Michael, our son, is finishing a master's degree at University of Montana in Missoula. They both went far away. Um, and we'll be there soon to celebrate um, his graduation and the first weekend in May. He'll be certified to teach high school chemistry and earth science. I went through training to become a parish ministry associate and was certified in 2003. And I take this call to serve as a PMA very seriously and pray that my words today may touch your hearts. The gospel lessons of this epiphany season have all been about the authority that God gave Jesus. Two weeks ago, Jesus read from Isaiah and declared that the prophecy was fulfilled in his reading of it. Last week, <clears throat> Jesus declared his authority in his hometown, although they didn't really want to hear that message in his hometown. This week, we hear that the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God. We're so fortunate to live in a time and a place where the word of God can be read freely in our homes, 
in our worship spaces, and wherever we find a quiet place to read, maybe a coffee shop, the library, a park bench. And we're fortunate that many of us have the word in our homes. Many of us have several copies in our homes. The Gospel of Luke makes it abundantly clear that Jesus has the power and the authority to read and preach the Word of God. Jesus has been anointed by God to preach the Gospel to everyone. God sent Jesus to heal, preach forgiveness, and set us free. So I took on a challenge this this year The challenge was to read through one of the Gospels entirely in the shortest period of time possible. It took me a week. And to write down three to five things that either I learned or relearned about Jesus, something that jumped off the page at me, and then to consider how that might change me this year. I picked Luke. I picked Luke partly because we're reading it this epiphany season and partly because I hadn't read through that one recently. So three things jumped out at me as I did that reading. And the first one was in the fourth chapter, verse 43, where it says, Jesus says, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also because for this purpose I was sent. And that that verse just jumped off the page at me because Jesus never sits still. He never sat in one place. He's always moving around. He's not just in the synagogue. He was by the lake shore, and today we heard he was sitting in a boat. Um, He doesn't even stay in his own hometown. He moves around a lot. He travels to where the people are, and the people come. And he stepped into that boat to preach from the water so that the shore could fill with those who wanted to hear it. And so I got to thinking, why was that written so plainly for us? Why is it important that Jesus said that so clearly, maybe to me? And what does it mean for me? Maybe we're not to get too comfortable. And maybe we should be ready to share the good news anywhere maybe even any time with our brothers and sisters. The second verse that jumped out at me as I read through it was from chapter 10, verse 2. It says, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Well, I know that God has called me to be a laborer. As I mentioned early, I take this call to be a parish ministry associate very seriously. I've used my training to lead the confirmation program at Prince of Peace um, for many years. I've stepped aside to let someone else have that joy. I co-served Peace Lutheran Church in Hollister for an entire year with Pastor Lauren Youngdale, who was Ingrid Trobisch's second husband. I say yes to pulpit supply calls when I'm available, and I've even stepped in to help with a funeral as needed. And so I think, what what does God have in mind for me this year? What might God have in mind for you as a laborer this year? Is there something more to be done, and what is God calling you and I to do, maybe this week or this year? It's one of the prayers that I pray every day, is to understand what would God, what does God want me to do today? What's the most important thing I need to get done today? And then this week, and then this year. Finally, my favorite chapter was chapter 15. Um, because this chapter shows that God is love, and he shows his love in so many ways. Chapter 15 has three parables in it. The parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the prodigal son. They're my favorite parables because they remind me always that we're never alone and we can't get lost. God is not going to let us be lost. And it's, it's a reminder, constant reminder for me, that when we get lost, someone is going to come and look for us. 
Someone is going to find us, and someone is going to bring us home. God is good. He knows each and every one of us, and he loves us. He loves us so much, and he doesn't want us to be lost, but honestly, it's pretty easy to get off the path and lose our way at times. But God loves us so much that he sent Jesus to earth to live among us, to teach us, to heal, and to show us what real love looks like. Then Jesus, obedient to his Father in heaven, died on the cross for your sins and for mine. We are forgiven today and always, and all we're asked in return is to love our neighbors as ourselves. So I challenge you to read one of those Gospels. Mark is the shortest, so if you want a short one, you get that. John is the most philosophical, if you like that. Matthew was written for the Jews. It's very, very historical. A great timeline, if you're interested in that. And once again, I chose Luke because it was what we're reading this season. But make your own lists. And make your list and share it as we continue to celebrate this season of Epiphany. And yes, I'm a teacher. And no, this is not a test. Um, but God does expect us to read his word, to follow him, and to become a disciple. Disciples share good news. They help their neighbor, and they speak well of others. But disciples like you and I are also sinners. We're not perfect, and we never will be. But we are teachable, and God gave us his word to read and study. It is truth. It is our guide. It is our manual as Christians, but only if we read it. Even Paul, as he wrote to the Corinthians, proclaimed the authority of Jesus. He takes responsibility for his call and role as a disciple, as one of the chosen. He also recognizes his weaknesses and his faults. Paul states, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And isn't that true for each one of us? But by the grace of God, we are what we are. God's grace gives us the power to be who we are, children of God, capable of loving and serving one another, capable of sharing the good news that God loves each of us. He created us and loves us and loves all those around us, the neighbors we know and the neighbors we have not yet met. Let us pray. God, you have provided your word to us in the testaments written in the Bible. Give each of us a little nudge this week to open the book we have at home. Open our hearts to the message you would have us learn this week. By your grace, we are who we are. Help us to be your hands and feet in the world today. Help us to know what our hands and feet should be doing this week. Thank you for your presence today and always. Amen.
confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Give us courage to answer your call and keep us faithful to your life-giving word. Send us out to be the good news of your love for all people. Lord, in your mercy. For the earth, for the tundra and forests, grasslands and deserts, for those who fish and those who farm, for ranchers, gardeners, and all whose work brings food to our tables. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, grant wisdom to those in authority, strengthen peacekeepers, ambassadors, military personnel, and disaster relief workers. Protect families who have had to leave their homes because of war, natural disasters, or rejection by their communities. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need, for those whose lives are in turmoil, for those who wrestle with addiction, for those who are burdened by anxiety and self-doubt, for those who grieve and those who are ill, especially Janelle Joswick, Stephanie Jones, and Mary Jane Dunn. Lord, in your mercy. For this assembly, for those who prepare this space for worship and those who mentor others in, in the faith, for those who nurture fellowship within this congregation and those who reach out in service to our community. Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died and those now rest in your presence. Sustain us in hope of the resurrection and bring us into the joy of unending life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace with one another. God's peace be with you.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your grace, gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, holy God, mighty and immortal, through Christ our Lord. In your Son, Christ Jesus, your eternal light has dawned upon our darkness, and by his death and resurrection, you reveal your glory to every nation. And so with the church on earth, with Simeon and Anna, with the whole company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, holy God, the first and the last, life's beginning and its end. You called us to live as your people. You promised to be our God. When time and again we failed to trust your promise and refused to walk in your ways, you sent your word made flesh, the root and offspring of David, to dwell among us and to draw us back to you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and all who share this meal. By your Spirit, wipe away all tears and mend with mercy what sin has torn, that we might await Christ's coming with glad and joyful hearts, and at last feast forever at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table is set. Come and taste that the Lord is good. Today we will celebrate communion using intinction. And so we'll form a line um, in the middle, um, and then we'll have the, the glasses ready for you for the intinction as well. Come and taste that the Lord is good. The body of Christ is given for you.
please stand as you're able for the blessing? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We thank you, O oh God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free, use your gifts to build one another up, and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. So it says there are announcements now. I don't have anybody, any announcements. Are there any announcements that need to be made this morning? Oh, yeah. uh, you've got one. All right, great. Yes. Thank you. I, I just will uh, mention to make sure you saw it that next Saturday we'll be having some training for communion assistants, assisting ministers, and acolytes. So that is at noon on Saturday. Thank you. And now the glory, the God of glory, dwell in you richly name you beloved and shine brightly on your path and the blessing of almighty god the father the son and the holy spirit be upon you and remain with you always amen
guided by the gospel,